Uh, stop the recording. I started again. Share screen. Let's go back to the slide. We were on. We were talking about Las Vegas. Uh, in the first picture, the view behind me. Uh, Oslan, can I just start. make? Can I just make one? Uh, rec I will. I was going to write this in the evaluation, but can I just make one recommendation right now? If you sure, can. Sure. Make your presentation at slideshow mode because your slides are beautiful, but they're small. If you would, if you can use the slideshow mode, you, mm -hmm. we will have a, a bigger screen. We will see the pictures bigger. Slideshow. So, you know, I, I believe you're not using slideshow. Yeah, I'm not yeah, using the slideshow. Yes, mm -hmm. if you use the slideshow, the pictures will be bigger and we will enjoy them more. Uh, like this. I know, but let me see. Like that, or yes, this is it. The top. This is it. Okay, then I have to scroll up and down. That's okay. That's okay. okay. Scroll up and down. That's okay. Okay, okay. I'm okay. shutting up now. Okay. Um, little bit of information about Las Vegas. Uh, the view behind me is the Eiffel Tower. It, it is half the size of the real Eiffel Eiffel Tower in Paris. Paris. And the hotel behind the Eiffel Tower is the Paris uh, Hotel. And to the left, Old Bellies Hotel, and to the left of that, Flamingo Hotel, which are uh, very old hotels in Las Vegas Strip. And also on the left side, you see the um, High Roller. Uh, it is called High Roller, that Ferris wheel. Uh, we took a ride on that last year, just uh, around New Year's. We were in uh, Las Vegas and we visited a bunch of other national parks like the Zion National Park and Moab and uh, the uh, Arches National Park and the Canyonland National Park in Utah as well. So let's go down a little bit. And this is a review from from the Eiffel Tower. There's a French restaurant on the top of Eiffel Tower. We were there and the hotel you see behind the one on the left side, the middle, Bellagio, with the big ponds, with the water fountains, that they have the shows every half an hour, sometimes every 15 minutes. And they play uh, music, Sometimes classical music. I love Andrea Bocelli's uh, or other famous songs with the water fountain and light show. It is uh, a fantastic show. Everybody needs to go see it at night with the lights. It looks so much better uh, than the day and they have certain hours they do those shows. Uh, you can check uh, before you travel. So let's go to the next one and maybe enlarge it. We come to the Grand Canyon. After our last day in Vegas, we drove to the south rim of Grand Canyon. Uh, Grand Canyon has um, three different entrances, one on the east side, uh, one on the south side, one on the no north side. The most popular one, uh, most visited one is the south rim. Uh, that's where we went this time. And I have visited Grand Canyon 12 years ago before having kids. Um, and it was South Rim as well. I haven't been to East Entrance or the North Rim yet. Uh, it is possible to hike from South Rim to North Rim or vice versa, but it is a 23.5 mile hike. So they don't recommend you do it in one day. Otherwise you have to walk and climb almost all of the day uh, to make it to the other side of the canyon. Uh, it is exhausting. There are some people who did that and they recommend you uh, stay overnight uh, down below uh, if you can, if you can camp, but then you will have more equipment to carry. I don't know if this is possible with kids, but if you are a hardcore camper and hiker, there are many trails. You can go down on the trails and come up from another trail or come back from the same trail. And there are easy ones, hard ones. Uh, you can always look at the map 
you get when you enter the national park. They give you a map and a brochure and you can check all the services there or all, all the trails where you can find food, lodging, camping. All the rules are written in the back of those uh, maps. So um, you can also read all that uh, in advance. You can research online. And uh, when you get there, you know where to go. If not, uh, you can be a spontaneous traveler. Sometimes that is a good idea too. You're just experiencing for yourself, for your family, and you're learning every experience uh, gives you wisdom at the end. Because if you haven't done anything, you don't have that experience, uh, information and knowledge. Uh, even if you make a mistake, that is okay. You create your own memories. We have done a couple of mistakes during this trip. Um, we trusted some of the people who gave us advice. Some advice was really good. Some advice was not that great. We regretted those choices. I will mention in a little bit. So Grand Canyon is um, the most famous national park in United States. And even in the world, it is one of the seven natural wonders in the world. If you ask anybody, uh, they will know it. And it is 277 miles long. It is huge. It is visible from space. And let's go to the next picture. This is the map I was talking about uh, for the Grand Canyon. Let's explore it a little bit. Uh, we stayed, we came from the south entrance down there. We stayed in a hotel called Grand Canyon Plaza, very close to Tusaya. And we drove 15 minutes to the park. And here is the visitor center. You can walk along the trails here. By the way, we arrived at Grand Canyon the night before, the, the day before, just before sunset. And we explored this part around the visitor center. Visitor center was closed. It closes at 5 p.m. You have to check all those hours so you can plan accordingly. So we took this orange trail and um, stopped at the viewpoints, take a couple of pictures. You will see some of the pictures in the next slide. But I will um, tell you more on this map. So let me explain all that. These colors are along the trails or the roads. Uh, these are the main roads. You can drive your car around here. These are the main parking lots around the visitor center. You can drive your car up to here where the blue line and the red line bus meets. After that, the red line, you cannot drive your car. So you either have to take uh, the shuttle bus to go to those viewpoints or some parts you can ride your bike if you have a bike and some parts have trails but it will take longer uh, with a family if you wanted to walk all these it's a couple of miles on the left side uh, where this red bus line um, goes to and um, blue and red line shuttle bus took us two and a half hours we parked our car at the visitor center here uh, we weren't sure if we will find parking spots uh, on the next um, stop. Uh, it is called the Bl Bright Angel uh, Trailhead, this area. There were parking spots, but it was hard to find since it wasn't a big parking lot. There were little lots here and there. So if you don't arrive early, parking your car uh, at the busy stops might be a problem. But you will always find a parking spot at visitor center. That's what we did, according to one advice, and took the shuttle bus. The blue line first went to the Bright Angel Trailhead, where they have the oldest hotels in the Grand Canyon, El Tovar Hotel, and other lodging options there. Um, as a decision, um, we decided we will be outdoors because uh, we didn't want to put our masks on and get in the line, go indoors. Um, on another trip, maybe we can visit inside those hotels because they are historic. They are more than a hundred years old. And 
the first settlers or the travelers came here, built those hotels, and since then they were visited a lot. And it is possible to stay in one of those lodgings, but it was extremely expensive when we checked the lodging inside the park in those old hotels. So we decided to stay a little bit out uh, and drive our car and uh, stop whenever we want and see whatever we want. So at the entrance, um, the officer at the entrance told us to go uh, park here, visitor center and took the shuttle bus, two lines, blue line and the red line. But we didn't like it so much as a family of four. The bus, there's a line for the bus, first of all. I will show those pictures. Let me uh, go to that. Um, let's fit these. You know, you want to see it bigger, but then I can't fit the whole page. Um, and it is hard to scroll up and down. But let's show you this one. Um, my kids might be there, so. Uh, there are different views everywhere. We were you along, along the rim. If you take a trail down, you have better views, different views, because it also depends where the sun is. All that light and shadow moves every minute and you get different, different pictures, different views. All of them are magnificent, majestic all inspiring and uh, everybody needs to go visit uh, Grand Canyon. This is also another shot um, looking towards the east side and sun was at the back so you can only see the silhouettes but I think it's a beautiful picture as well. Let's go to the next one and this is a zoom in close up of the Colorado River there. Um, you can watch a documentary about how the Grand Canyon was formed. It was millions and millions years ago. And there are a couple of uh, similar theories, uh, but basically this was an inland sea back uh, in the day, uh, millions of millions years ago. And they find seashells at the bottom of the canyon in those riverbeds and in those rocks, there are fossils of uh, snails, sea animals, sea stars, and uh, the remainings of the skeletons of the organisms from the sea. So it's hard to believe, but millions of millions of years ago, there was an inland sea in the middle of United States here, and all those sedimentation in different stages in history build up in this canyon. So you can see the layers and layers of rocks changing colors uh, from the bottom to the top. It's like a time machine, if you can imagine what happened. And they believe after the end of the ice age, this Colorado River uh, was gushing so powerfully and it's uh, it's carved around the land and made that big canyon. And there are other explanations and theories as well how this happened, when, ha when this happened. I um, suggest that you watch a documentary. That's what we do. Uh, and if we have internet reception in the car while we're traveling, we are watching a short documentary that kids can understand and see what we're go going to see in our next stop. So uh, you can do the same. And this is one of the viewpoints uh, close to the visitor center in the midway along that orange orange route. And we took a couple of pictures. Uh, it is beautiful. And they were recommending, there were signs that recommend uh, to have your masks on, even outdoors if it's crowded but not many people outdoors had the masks on, just maybe 10% of the people had that. And uh, when you're in fresh air, uh, that's our preference not to wear masks as well. Uh, but if you wanna get inside the visitor center, the hotels, the shops, the restrooms, you have to put a mask on and get in the line. So uh, there are other pictures, every viewpoint have different views and angles and the lighting and the shadows. 
So um, every moment is a different experience. These are all from Grand Canyon viewpoints. Uh, this was the bus line uh, that I was talking about. Um, we waited in the line and we got in the bus and there was like 25 people allowed in the bus. This is from the bus and you are not, you have to put your mask on at all times. You cannot eat or drink. There are rules and restrictions. And uh, also there are laws in US and regulations and they had to leave these eight seats empty just in case something goes wrong and they have to get a stretcher in or a handicapped person has to get in. So while these eight seats were empty, we were trying to get in 25 people in the bus. So this delayed our trip a little bit. We uh, didn't like this experience so much. Uh, we like to have the freedom to drive our car and park where, wherever we want and explore that area. So uh, this was the hardest part of our trip. And there are stops. Um, if I can go back, I don't know if I can go back. But there are many stops on this bus ride. And if, if you get off the bus, you have to get in line. There's another bus coming in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, they are very regular, but every bus that comes, comes full. If nobody gets off the bus, you cannot get in and this delays you further. So we couldn't uh, get off in the stops, the viewpoints we wanted to see and explore. Thinking that on the way back, we have to wait in the line for an hour if the, all the buses uh, pass came full. So uh, this was a little bit difficult for us and it took more than expected. It took two and a half hours, but the red line, you cannot go there with your own car. Permits rest uh, is at the end of that. And I think these are from that area. We took a short trail at the end of the bus stop and we took the next bus so that we can come back and don't lose much time. Um, and these are the views from that east side going towards the Hermit's Rest. But at the end, the last stop was not that exciting. So if you want to go there, you might skip this part and the shuttle experience and just stay around the visitor center and go towards the west, um, sorry, uh, west side or the other side, uh, go towards the desert view uh, house um, on the map. So these are all from different point uh, views, um, Pima Point, Mojave Point, Hermit's Rest, and all the other points along the way. And at the end, we went to the uh, right side on that map. Um, it will take a lot of time to find the map and go back. So this is the desert view house. Mm, very close to the right side and let me see more in point. This was a beautiful uh, stop. So uh, there is a watchtower. The watchtower was not closed on the day we were there, but I saw a couple of pictures uh, from the hiking and traveling groups. I have in, uh, I'm a member in uh, Facebook. I also recommend all those groups if you're into camping, hiking, traveling. There are certain groups uh, in Facebook. You can just uh, be a member, ask a question before you go on a trip. You can ask for the best places to stay or best uh, trails with kids. And you can get more, collect more information before your trip. But this was a fun stop for us and we could drive our car there, park it and uh, see all the views at our own time. And this is the end of it, uh, the tribal connections. And of course, all these lands belong to Native American people back in the day before America was um, conquered and captured by the Europeans. So uh, there is a, a lot of tribal history and some of the names of these places have Native American names. Uh, actually, Grand Canyon is called also Kaibab 
in um, Native American language, it means upside down mountain or an inverted mountain. Um, and also, um, and then, okay. After the Grand Canyon, we we're over with Grand Canyon. We drove towards New Mexico, towards east. And we came to a small town, Farmington, New Mexico. There's no, there are no pictures here because we only stayed at the hotel here because we were in, interested in the attractions around that area. And we wanted to find a small, comfortable hotel, not so expensive. So we uh, decided to stay in Farmington, New Mexico. We have never been there. Uh, it is close to other attractions. And some people suggested we should stay in Durango, Colorado, which is one hour from Farmington, New Mexico. This is very close to New Mexico and Colorado um, border. But this was just to stay there and go around the places for two days that we were interested in. Let's see what's next. Uh, we went to Durango that night. Um, oh, no, first, yeah. Durango for dinner that night. It took one hour to get there and we had dinner and then came back. I don't have too many pictures here. Uh, this is on the streets there. Durango is a nice little town. Let's go back. Um, so it is surrounded by San Juan Mountains and Animas River Valley. It is on, on that beautiful land. And the elevation is, I'll say the meters, um, 1,985 meters. It's a beautiful town. It has a railroad, which is famous. I haven't taken the train yet, but maybe one day I will do that as well. The population is just 19,000, uh, uh, according to the census in 2020. So let's move forward. This is from the main street of Durango and in the following section they have uh, restaurants and some art galleries shops it is a touristic uh, small town that everybody from Colorado and outside Colorado wants to come in uh, enjoy this um, town and then uh, the next morning we went to Navajo Lake in uh, New Mexico it's a big lake uh, it's also a reservoir because there's a dam and this Navajo is one of the ancient tribes, uh, American na nation, Native American tribes that lived there, that lived uh, in the southern western part of Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. So all that three states area has uh, tribal lands. And Navajo Lake, we have been to Navajo Lake uh, some years ago from the Colorado side, side because it's a long uh, river. I don't have a map of it, but let's see. It branches out, it goes up to Colorado. And this time we rented a boat from the New Mexico side, Navajo Lake um, Marina for half day. And we really enjoyed this uh, excursion uh, on the boats. We rented a 19 feet pontoon boat, uh, just four of us. Uh, you can drive the boat. Uh, they give you the instructions. And if you have driven a boat before, it's not that hard. It's easy to learn. And me and my husband, even my kids drove the boats when there were no boats around. And it was so much fun. And we pulled the tube behind us. So everybody tried tubing behind the boat. And is there, I guess I skipped one of the slides, no worries. I, I thought I had more on the lake, but we had uh, so much fun on that boat uh, for four or five hours, half day. And that was the end of the day. Uh, we went back to the hotel after a nice dinner. And the last day of our trip, going back home from um, Farmington, New Mexico, from our hotel, back to Denver. We had a couple of plans in our minds, but uh, we figured 
stopping in many stops will take us so much time. And this was on Sunday. On Monday, kids were supposed to go to school early in the morning. Uh, we had the great sand dunes uh, in our plans, but it wasn't feasible. So we skipped that part. And it's in our plans that we might do it this weekend or the following weekend if the weather permits. So we decided to just take the scenic route back to Denver from Southwest Colorado. And also in Southwest Colorado, there's an, another national park, Mesa Verde National Park, uh, which, uh, which was very old, also belonged to um, Native American um, dwellings there and caves and carved into the mountain. So uh, it's a sacred place. We couldn't do that because we didn't have enough time to drive back home. And yet we came home midnight, Sunday night, and the next day kids went to school. On the way, we passed by the Million Dollar Highway, Colorado. This is the uh, road which is called US 550. It starts from Silverton, Colorado to Ore, Colorado. It's beautiful. It has a, it passes through the mountains, which it's a curvy road. Some parts are dangerous uh, along the cliffs and you pass over the Red Mountain Pass uh, with a summit of 11,075 feet, which is 3,375 meters high. So in winter, um, it's, it might start to slow, uh, snow in Colorado uh, in October. And I've heard that there was some snowfall right after we passed by this highway. Uh, the next week they had some snowfall. So those pe peaks of the mountains had some white snow of it, on, on them. So in winter, this, they say this road gets very uh, dangerous and risky in some parts and they may close this pass. So uh, I believe it was the right time to pass by that road uh, route. And uh, there was a shorter highway that goes directly to Denver but it wasn't the scenic route. So we picked this one and it didn't disappoint us. And the leaves were changing. You have like a window of two weeks in Colorado, depending on where you are. Uh, we have the evergreens that stay green all year round. And we have the aspens and other uh, trees that change color and lose their leaves uh, before the first snowfall. So uh, this was the right time to pass by there. You can see the colors, leaves changing, those yellows and oranges. Maybe one more week they had the peak colors. And then uh, if you have a strong storm, um, rain or snowfall, all those leaves will um, die and fall down. So um, let's go to the next picture. These are all along the way uh from Durango can you can you Denver. can you please wrap up in one it's minute it's almost because... over yeah but uh, zoom is just the... about to cut us off uh -huh. zoom okay. is just about to cut us off can you this wrap up in one minute please okay molas lake and all the views on the road and there was an old mine uh, there are gold mines or uh, usually uh, colorado is known for gold mining this was one of the old mining towns as well. Uh, this is one of the ones uh, we passed by on the road. And there are small lakes and reservoirs with the reflection of those colors. It's beautiful. And uh, this is the pass, a Red Mountain Pass, which is very high. One side is against the cliff. So uh, if you are afraid of the heights, uh, you might not wanna drive there when it's uh, dangerous and icy. And then this is the little town on the way, Ore, where the million dollar highway ends. It is. It has a nickname, Switzerland of Colorado. This is not the best picture. You cannot see the town from the bushes in front of us, but I couldn't uh, copy the um, drone pictures here, but it's a beautiful town. Everybody likes to go visit there. So this is the end of my presentation. And I hope you liked it.
And I hope I could inspire you to take a road trip. Turkey or wherever you are has lots of natural and historic beauties and you can go on your car and explore. I, I am looking forward to my next road trip. Thank you. Right. Okay, so please write your evaluations to me. You have my phone number. Meral Hanum, I sent it to you too. Did you get it? Yes, I did. Yes, uh, you write through WhatsApp to me an evaluation, not just the positive points, please, also the negative points. Normally we would have a question and answer session as well, but we ran out of time. So uh, next week we will have another one. So goodbye everyone. And I'm expect I'm waiting for your evaluations thank also, you also they can, okay, they can thank send you. me their questions and i will try to answer as of course uh, of course this will be this will be on uh, this will be okay. on facebook and instagram they can write their questions underneath okay bye bye